a specific kind of function, which we're going to call constructor style functions, uh, deserves a little bit of special attention because, uh, first of all, they sort of behave the way that you would like them to behave if JavaScript actually had classes. And second, because this is the source of one of the most widely cited misfeatures of the language in terms of how it's designed. Um, as a segue, uh, here's a, a picture of the device that I brought in last time, the Apple Newton, the original handheld, although my hand is barely large enough to hold it. It was pretty, pretty heavy. It was like the size of a thick paperback book. Um, but one of the interesting things about it technologically is that the language in which you programmed it and in which a lot of its runtime system was written was a direct descendant of a language called Self, which really was a research project at Xerox PARC, which, you know, as, as the book mentions, roughly speaking, if it's a thing in personal computing, it was probably invented at Xerox PARC. Uh, it was just, you know, in its heyday, it was uh, a powerhouse of ideas. You know, Ethernet, laser printing, object-oriented programming, um, a lot of these things were either developed or, you know, really uh, given flesh and reality and put into products or prototypes uh, by Xerox PARC researchers. So self is the language that it was the first incarnation of this really unusual system of inheritance called prototypal inheritance. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about because it will help you understand why this special kind of function that we think of as a constructor behaves the way it does. So every JavaScript object that you create has a prototype. It's kind of like the ancestor in that when you look up a property, when you refer to a property in an object, if that property is not found, the object can ask its ancestor whether the ancestor has the property. And that can continue all the way up to uh, the, the root object, which is the, the sort of uh, the top of the inheritance chain, if you will. Um, so this is the mechanism that is used in a sort of interesting way to allow us to work with functions that kind of behave the way you'd expect instance methods to work in an object-oriented language. Um, sometimes you'll hear this called prototypal inheritance. That's its original name. Uh, you may also hear it called differential inheritance, because in some sense, the, the difference between your properties and your parents' properties is what defines each object. Right? So if I, I can override a property that my parent also has, and then you'll get my version of that property. But if you ask me for a property and I don't have it, my parent, my prototype object will get consulted instead. So you can think of it as the difference between me and my parent is just the deltas between the things that I've added or the things that I've overridden in my parent. So what are these constructor style functions? Um, I'll show you a code example in a moment, but here's why it's considered JavaScript's single worst design flaw. Uh, if you write a function a certain way, then if you call that function using the new keyword, then it will, the result of calling the function is it will create a new object. The prototype for that object is whatever the function's prototype is, and it returns the new object. So this should sound a lot like what happens when you call a constructor in a normal uh, object-oriented language that has classes. And if you then take that function or take that object and start calling functions on it, because for example, some of the slots of the newly created object are function valued, then inside those functions, the value of this will refer to the object that you called the function on, kind of like the receiver in Ruby. So again, this is beginning to smell a lot like creating an instance of an object from a constructor and then calling instance methods on that object where you have the keyword this referring to the object itself. So far, so good. If you call a function but without the receiver, then the value of this, if it appears in the function, it's assumed to refer to the global object. There is no good reason for this except that this has to point to something. And if you're calling a function that wasn't defined this way, the only sensible thing to make it point to is the global object. This is terrible because it's legal to do and because it's not what you want. And recall that I mentioned the global object when JavaScript is embedded in a web browser is an object representing the window or the document that you just opened. So basically what you're doing is you're, getting, you're setting properties or trying to call methods on the global object, which is the window, almost never what you want. Um, and if you could, and you can also take these constructor-like functions and call them without the new keyword. Um, but if you do that, then you get terrible behavior. The return value is not a new object; rather, the return value is undefined. So let's take a look at an example of this. It'll make a little more sense when we look at it in context. And I'll fix the video in a moment. So here's an example of a function that I'm going to use as a constructor-style function. So there isn't actually anything special about the function itself. It's the way we call it that gives it the constructor-like behavior. Um, you'll notice that I have capitalized its name. Uh, this is sort of a universally accepted JavaScript practice. If you're writing a function whose role it is to be called in this constructor-like fashion, give it a capital letter name so that whenever you see a call to it, you know immediately that you need to call this function using the new keyword. Uh, more about that in a moment. So here's a function of three arguments. 
uh, ostensibly it's going to create a new object that represents some sort of movie. And I'm using the fact that this is a reference to the, the new object that is being created, and I can set some properties on it. Um, here is a property that I'm setting, which is function valued, OK for kids, uh, which just tests what the rating property is. Um, I have another simple function, full title, that uh, concatenates the title and the year, et cetera, et cetera. You probably remember seeing these functions before. So how would I call this? If I say something like uh, var pianist equals new movie, then indeed the thing that I get back, pianist, uh, is an instance, what you can think of as an instance of this object, so that when I call full title, what's happening here, right? Am I calling an instance method? No, not really. I'm referring to a slot, right? So pianist.fullTitle is a reference to this. And because the thing that I'm referring to happens to be a function, I can also call it. That's what the parens are doing. Okay? So again, from if you kind of squint, it looks like we're calling an instance method, but there are no instance methods. We're referring to a property that is function valued. We are taking advantage of the fact that because that property happens to be a function, we can call it, because you can't, do, you can't call something that isn't a function. right? You can't call a string. Um, and we're taking advantage of the fact that because we used new when we created this object, when we call the function, the value of this inside the function is going to be the value of the object that was created. Right? So again, it's an instance method. It's really not. You created an instance of an object. You really didn't. I'm sure it, it sounds more confusing than it really is. I did the same thing here with another variable, chocolat. Um, I can also add methods to an individual object. Right? Remember, what is pianist? It's not an instance. It's just an object. It's a, play, it's a hash that inherited from the same prototype that this function inherits. So it just means that by default, these are the slots, title, year, rating, etc., that Pianist has. But there's nothing to stop me from adding additional slots or properties to it. Like, here is a function I've defined only on this object, not on other objects that were created using the same, uh, same technique. So if I tried to call it on another object, it wouldn't work. Um, as a bit of obscurity so you can understand how prototypal inheritance works, um, prototype is a built-in method that will tell you what the prototype of this object is. I said, remember I said movie is it's just a function. Uh, every object has a prototype, so it has a prototype. And remember that I said when you use new to call one of these functions, the object that is returned has as its prototype whatever the function's prototype is. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying in the prototype for the function, create a new slot, which is function valued. Right? So now what happens? If I try to call that on an already created object, it works. Why does it work? Because Chocolat, the object, doesn't have a title with rating slot, but it can ask its prototype. And I just added that object to its prototype. Right? The, the, this object and the function that created it share the common prototype, and that's where I added the property. So again, I'm trying to illuminate that prototypal inheritance is its own thing. There are many ways you could use this. You could use it to try to build something that looks like classes. I wouldn't recommend doing it. Um, OK, now what about the bad behavior? Look what I've done here. I'm calling movie, but I forgot to include the new keyword. This is a perfectly legal call because movie is just a plain old function. But because I didn't use the new keyword, two horrible, horrible things happen. The first one is that inside the function, when I make this call, okay, inside the body of the function, this no longer refers to a, a newly created object. Instead, it refers to the global object, the thing that is the window representing the current document in the browser. So, I'm creating all of these random properties on the window object that's representing the current document, not what I intended. And furthermore, the return value of the overall call to movie, where am I down here? The return value of this, because I didn't use the new keyword, is going to be undefined. The function didn't try to return anything. And if you don't return anything and you're not calling it with a new keyword, the return value is undefined. So now I have an object that I probably think is an instance of a movie. But in fact, it's an undefined object. And I'll get errors when I try to dereference slots because it's not defined. Right? There, there's no object there. There's no there there. So this is a horrible design feature. And it's the reason that everybody pretty much insists in the JavaScript world that if you give a function a capital letter name, it means you're only intended to call it with the new keyword. It behaves like a constructor. If you give a function a non-capital letter name, like these, it means that they're intended to be called either uh, as having an object as the receiver or just sort of as raw, bare helper functions that don't really operate on an instance at all. All righty? All righty. So with that in mind, now it's time to parse some code. 
here is four lines of JavaScript and two lines of curly braces, I guess. Um, but which of these JavaScript calls will evaluate to the integer 9? And only one of them will, so it's not a trick question. <laughs>